and we are here to serve Lord, you. We come to your throne to bow down. Hey everyone, it's that time of year again where the leaves are falling on the ground and you see brown and green leaves on the trees. It's beautiful. So here at the well, we are falling into Thanksgiving all month long and honoring our sister, Cherie Williams, as we remember her, what she did in this life. And moving on, we just want to give thanks and praise to our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. And we're featuring quite a few things that have to do with Thanksgiving this year. We are looking at the things we eat, the blessings that the Lord has given unto us. And in this episode, you're going to learn the history behind Thanksgiving. So stay tuned. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. So, you know, we, in this season we're giving God thanks, as we said, and words come to mind like cornucopia. Like, what, what is exactly that? is that? <laughs> so well, like, it is a part of history. Uh, okay. And that's something I actually taught my children in pre-K when I used okay. to teach in the daycares. Okay. And um, just as a reminder of the plenty that they have, it's otherwise known as the corn, the horn of plenty. Mm. Um, and I can actually read that definition for well, you. Before you do that, the okay. horn of plenty is like really sticking with me right now. Who is our horn of plenty? I mean, who's our main source? Our main source is we know Jesus Christ. Yes. He provides for us. Mm -hmm. uh, he gives us all that we need. He is the all-sufficient one. Exactly. He is the El Shaddai, the God of plenty. plenty. Oh my goodness. God of plenty. So this season, that it makes me think of the El Shaddai. Yeah. The God the of than, plenty. More the more than, than enough. enough. Yes. So whatever you need during this time, you know, some of you might be wondering, well, what am I going to cook this Thanksgiving? What am I my next... Where's no. my next meal coming from? No. And there are people in this world who don't even have it. People without. People without. And so we really need to give God thanks for no. the blessings. For the many blessings. The many blessings. That he's given us. That he's given us. When you us. take your next bite, remember, someone else can't even take that bite. Mm -hmm. And they want to bite into something that you're eating. It's just a, not to make you feel down and out about someone else, but it's, it's just a reminder to yes. think of the less fortunate because there are those in the world suffering oh. from lack of food. Yeah, and in this episode, you're going to get to see some raw footage. <laughs> we went to Suzette's house and we, <laughs> and, you know, we were there watching her cooking up a meal. Yeah. And I think you'll enjoy just a little bit of a sneak peek of that. But before we do that, Suzette, you were going to give us the definition. Well, um, it is the cornucopia, yeah. a symbol of plenty consisting of a goat's horn overflowing with flowers, fruit, and corn. An ornamental container shaped like a goat's horn. Hmm. Very interesting. That's just a little bit of um, information for you. But it is a part of our history going back, dating back to the pilgrims. And, um, you know, all of that history contains food, the emblem yeah. of food. And, oh. You know, eating around the dinner table. Take a look at this history lesson behind Thanksgiving. We're all familiar with the story of the first Thanksgiving when the pilgrims invited local Native Americans to share a meal with them. But we bet you didn't know Thanksgiving didn't become an annual tradition until more than 200 years later. That first Thanksgiving in 1621 wasn't just one big meal. It was a three-day festival of eating, hunting, and other entertainments in honor of the pilgrims' first successful harvest. The Indians killed five deer as gifts for the colonists so venison was definitely on the first Thanksgiving menu. But we bet you didn't know that turkey was not. They also didn't have pumpkin pie or potatoes, which hadn't been introduced to New England yet. And while they may have eaten cranberries, they would have been served plain, not in a sauce or relish. The pilgrims didn't plan on starting a Thanksgiving tradition. In fact, they didn't repeat the November celebration in subsequent years. In 1789, President George Washington announced the first ever national Thanksgiving holiday, which took place on Thursday, November 26th. But it didn't become an annual tradition nationwide until the 19th century. That's when an American writer named Sarah Josepha Hale, most famous for writing the nursery rhyme Mary Had a Little Lamb, was inspired by a diary of pilgrim life to recreate that first Thanksgiving feast. 
Beginning in 1827, Hale waged a nearly 30-year campaign to make Thanksgiving a national holiday. She also published recipes for pumpkin pie, turkey, and stuffing that probably didn't appear on the pilgrim's plates, but would become the staples of modern Thanksgiving meals. In 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln announced that the nation would celebrate Thanksgiving every year on the final Thursday in November. But did you know, in 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to move the holiday up a week to give Depression-era retailers more time to make money during the pre-Christmas shopping season. The move was widely criticized, and in 1941, FDR signed a bill fixing Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday in November, where it stays today. One of the quirkiest Thanksgiving traditions began in 1989, when President George H.W. Bush granted the first official pardon to a turkey. Every November since then, the current Oval Office occupant has given a reprieve to one or two turkeys, sending them into retirement on a farm rather than to a dinner table. Though it only began in the late 20th century, the story has become one of the more unusual chapters in the long history of Thanksgiving traditions. You know what story I'm really thinking of right now? The story of Joseph. Oh. When he was given the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream, when right. the Lord showed Pharaoh what was going to happen, they had seven years of famine, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and seven years of plenty, yeah, right. Yeah, wow. Well, they had the seven years of plenty before the famine, mm -hmm. so God had them prepare for that store time, up. store up, mm -hmm. right. God did not leave them without, right? right? right. A nation, and He showed Pharaoh a king mm -hmm. that called himself a god, yeah. right. God yeah. still prepared for this paganistic nation. Because yeah. he loved them. Because he loved them. Mm -hmm. and, but he also loved his servant Joseph, yes. who he was setting up for some exactly. great things. He was preserving him for his family who was to exactly. come. Exactly. And maybe you're preserved, you're, you're, you're preserved for someone else. Oh. Mm. Think about all that Joseph had to go through. Yeah. He really he had to go through slavery. He yeah. had to go through embarrassment mm -hmm. by his by Potiphar, yeah. who accused him of sleeping or trying to sleep with his, his wife. wife. Mm -hmm. Well, his wife, you know, lied. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, Joseph he had to go through so much yeah. to be the preserver of his family. Wow. Right. He had to be. He was that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you went through something like Joseph, where you've been lied mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. You were um, accused wrongly for something. Yes. We didn't even know we were going to go there, but maybe someone needs to hear that God has a purpose for you still being here. Exactly. And you don't need to be ashamed of your past, but get past your past. Get past Because it. there's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And so if you walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh, you can live in Christ Jesus empowered. And there's so much to reap, right? Yes. There's so much to reap when you when you sow after the Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Not after the flesh. Yes. And even you might be going through a famine right now, yeah. but there's provision there God is, is making provision. for you. Mm -hmm. God is making provision for you. Yeah. And we're just going to continue to thank Him here mm -hmm. at the Word with Sue, with the yeah. well. We're going to be thanking God thank for you. His many blessings. So let's take a look now at Suzette's... A sneak peek. <laughs> <laughs> Suzette's country home... Well, home cooked meal. <laughs> I guess you could call it that. I'm no chef, y'all. But and, I cook a meal. <laughs> and her kids are also in this clip, y'all. Yeah. So stay tuned. Enjoy. <laughs> Families all around the globe, well, all around the United States, will be celebrating together around the dinner table. And so we're going to head on into Suzette's house. We're going to look at what she's cooking in the kitchen today. Oh, I can smell it from out here. It is delicious, y'all. Mmm. Anyway. Come and join me in the kitchen. Hey, Suzette, what are you doing in here? Well, I am cooking for my family and yours. <laughs> so, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Uh, uh, uh just the food. Oh, you are, and you're. You know what? You're right on topic because today we we're talking about how God has blessed us with plenty, and in Thanksgiving, you know, we always celebrate with food, right? What are you looking forward to eating this Thanksgiving? Turkeys. Oh. So what do you want to tell people out there that they should be doing this Thanksgiving? Eating. They should be eating. All right. Well, bye to TV land. Bye to TV land. <laughs> oh, let's see what you have over here. Guys, it smells so good in here. Yeah, there's some curry chicken. 
making the breasts the kids love, so I'm just, you know, getting it, um, you know, fair from the fair. Yes. Yeah, so. That looks good. Yeah, right. and I'm going to make some rice and veggies. You're going to enjoy that. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm just really thankful for the blessing, the plenty. Mm -hmm. You know, the children of Israel had to be in the wilderness, and they received manna from heaven. God provided yes. for them. Yes. But what they really wanted was the, the abundance. And yes. And that. So yes. I'm grateful today that he's not just, I'm not just getting manna. But I have plenty. All right, I'm living girl. in the overflow, the abundance. That's right. And I have great expectations. So. Yeah. And I see you have written over here, God bless our home. Well, God has indeed blessed your home. Yeah, oh. Grateful. <laughs> oh, here is Grace. So, Grace, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Oh, you are? What do you want to thank God about for? <laughs> Stop. Awesome. All right. Say bye to the people in TV land. Bye. Looking good. Looking good, yeah. Enjoy your wife's cooking. It's looking good over there. Oh my god. Alright, oh, let me leave you alone to eat. Happy Thanksgiving! Yeah. Oh, Suzanne, that was fun, right? Yeah, that was real fun. <laughs> Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, she I has some know, really chef. beautiful children. Thank you. Yeah. So does she. <laughs> but, you know, we thank God for our children, yeah. or the gift of family, mm -hmm. right? Oh God, what would we do without our families? Yeah. And going back to the story of Joseph, yeah. his family, they had, I mean, his brothers, mm -hmm. they went against him. Yeah, but they were an important piece of the puzzle in God's mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. So he had to preserve one for the rest. Yes. Mm. Maybe you have a family member who maybe you're not seeing eye to eye at the yeah. moment. Someone who stabbed you in the back. You know, I but you know what? What does Joseph's story teach us? Mm -hmm. It teaches us about forgiveness. forgiveness. And I've been talking about that a lot this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. That's an amazing thing for us to... Um, think about doing Thanksgiving because in order to be thankful yeah. we cannot be bitter we cannot be bitter and God will not really be pleased with mm -hmm. our praise mm -hmm. if we have unforgiveness or bitterness in our hearts yes. imagine if Joseph had held on to unforgiveness in his heart for oh, years he then he would have. not have received that blessing right he would have really um, you know he would have caused himself pain mm -hmm. and anguish for the rest of his life right. But when he forgave his brothers, mm. he was able to come into harmony with them mm -hmm. and live a peaceful, happy life in, right. the, end, in the end there. Um, and I'm thinking about the food that we eat. It should be good food. And uh -huh. I'm thinking about the food of the Word of God. Mm. That is what's going to give you a forgiving heart. Mm. And um, there's something I posted on Facebook the other day uh -huh. that, about forgiveness. Unforgiveness is like holding on to the dung of someone Ooh. else. Yeah. Someone left something that hurt you, they offended you. That's like the dung they left behind, the mm. stench. Mm. And yet you're holding on to it. Oh and that's God. gonna mess up your life. Mm. They have forgotten about that stench, but you're holding yeah, on you're to it. You're wallowing in that mess. Exactly. Oh. But the word of God can wash you pure of that. Yes. And and the more you, you think on the word of God, the more he shows you how to forgive. And you know, this month we're also honoring our sister Sheree yes. Williams mm -hmm. who passed on before us. And I imagine how hard it would have been for us if mm. we didn't have that relationship with her that yeah. we did. Imagine if she had passed on and we had unforgiveness toward her about anything. Ugh. Thankfully, we were living at peace with each other. We really were. Yeah, and you know, maybe there's someone out there who, you know, has to live with that. You know, someone mm. may have passed on. and mm. But God can still give you the peace that he you really need. Can. By confessing your sins to Him, mm -hmm. He can wash you clean. He can cleanse your heart of yes. any kind of bitterness that yes. you might be feeling on the inside. And be intentional about it. Yeah. You may not feel 
like at that moment when you're hurting, you may not feel the, the, the desire to forgive. Right. But if you practice it in your mind, it first begin in your mind. Mm. And if you can let the word, you know, germinate and grow yes, in you, let the yes. word penetrate your mind, yes. then eventually you'll start to feel what the words are that you're thinking. Yes. So the way you think is how you're going to feel. You know, I'm here sitting and I'm thinking about this beautiful song that Sherry sang on yes. the him album, which we're also featuring this month. You know, Jesus washes white as snow. And we're going to play that song for you in just a moment. Yeah. grace to claim I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain your heart mm. today and just give him it all give it all to him Hallelujah. let him bear these burdens mm -hmm. you can't go through this by yourself yeah. if you're having a hard time with this kind of issue maybe you're having a, pro a problem with forgiving with forgiving someone maybe you're having a hard time getting over what someone did to you yeah. maybe you've been molested in the past and you're having a hard time moving from that mm -hmm. um, you know you've experienced some hurts yeah. in your in your life that are legitimate hurts legitimate. okay you're mm -hmm. feeling you the feelings you have might be legitimate they're real. they're they're real but you cannot move on unless you deal with them unless you allow God to, to give you the healing you need yes he can heal you let the healing waters flow Amen. Today and as you, whenever you, when you gather around that dinner table with your family, talk about those things. You know, uh, don't yes. let the elephant be there in the room. Oh yes, deal with the elephant. Deal with the elephant, with the in, elephant the room, in the room. You know, and you can go to a place of forgiveness. Yes, you can healing. enjoy peace in your family, peace yeah. and harmony. You can have that. That yeah. is a possibility. And that still is enjoy the food. Yeah, <laughs> you enjoy it's, the food even more. Yeah, I mean, it's not far fetched. If yeah. you have a, a, a family member out there that you haven't spoken to in a while, yeah. pick up the phone and Speaking call up. them. Mm -hmm. You know, write a letter or something. If you're having a hard time facing them right away, mm -hmm. write a letter right from your heart. Yeah. You know, I mean. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you you have the power yeah. to do what you need to do to overcome this, overcome. and you can be healed from this in the process. In the process, um, Cherie was intentional. She called yes. us every week. I mean, I knew uh, the time she started doing that. We were it just was, talking about yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah, just she's... intentional, and mm -hmm. I believe that God prepared her. You know, we didn't know she was going to leave this earth mm, uh, in so July, so right yeah. after her birthday. But the Lord had prepared us and her for that time. Yes. And we're just grateful for the Holy Spirit that is a comforter during these mm. times. We're grateful for the legacy. Yeah. You know, her life was such an example to us. Mm -hmm. She was a light. a light. And that's what we're called to be. We yeah. are light. And going back to what we're called to be, yeah. God also called us to be salt, right? We're yes. the salt. Mm -hmm. Preservers. Preservers. Yes. That's what Joseph was yes. in this story. Mm -hmm. We are called to preserve. Amen. You are called to preserve. Amen. Right? Wow. Preserve the goodness. Right? Mm -hmm. You have goodness in you yes, that you God do. wants to preserve. Mm -hmm. That God wants to preserve. And as we're here, we're talking to you about this. There is a page on our website yes. where you can make prayer requests. Maybe you're, you need someone to pray with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the well, we can pray with you. Yes. Okay, yes. so feel free to post. And these can be posted anonymously. Yes, exactly. Okay, and we will pray mm -hmm. for you. And just know that there is somebody that God has made the way for you yeah. to, to reach out to. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember, he's the God of plenty. He provides. Yes. He provides, not just in terms of food, mm -hmm. but he provides people for you. He yes. provides what you need, you need. for the cleansing. 
Mm -hmm. But besides the plenty, maybe you're just needing one thing. Yeah. He is Jehovah Jireh, the and provider. He will provide yes. for you. His word says it, and He can only live by His word. Amen. So He can, He has to live up to His word. In other words, so just trust Him today. There's a song that we can leave with them today. Oh. You know, that's been kind of what we've been doing this month. <laughs> it says, "Trust and obey, for there is no, no other, other way, way, other way to, to be, be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey." Yeah. Trust and obey. There is no.